Hello and welcome to Copic in the Craft Room. Michelle Houghton here and we are going to be doing a little bit of no line coloring today which means I'm going to attempt to make the lines disappear so that you're not seeing an outline of anything. So one of the things that you'll notice that I do is sometimes I'll break things into sections. The t because the stamp we're using today it already has these smaller sections automatically and I'll be changing colors pretty quickly. I don't know that I'll have to do a lot of that but you might see me break like the shirt into two sections or um, that'd be the most obvious place. Um, could do the tree in some sections but I'm not sure. Most of it is separated out or like where his two hands kind of overlap I might do one and then do the other just so that I can keep that line clear and not lose that in my coloring. Um, the stamp that I'm using today is by Dreamland Crafts. This particular one is called Growing in Love. This was a newer um, stamp company to me. I have not used them before but I just felt like um, beautiful images and this particular one is awfully timely for Valentine's Day. So simple and sweet. So I've got us all zoomed in. I will speed us up and then we will, um, I'll post the colors that I'm using and then I will also talk you through the process. All right, sounds good. Let's get coloring. So I am going to start with their skin and I'm starting with an E triple zero. And notice I'm not doing all of it. I'm doing E02 next for some shading on the girl. I'm doing sections at a time. E000 to smooth. E11 or E11 to do some deeper shading. E02 and E000 to go back and smooth again. And then moving over to the little boy's face and his arms. And I am going to do those at the same time. I'm just going to make sure to hit those. Um, sections in between. Now I'm jumping right to E11 on him. I'm not going to do the E02. So his skin tone is going to look a little different. E000 to do some softening and blending. Back to E11 to reinforce some of those shadowed areas. Hitting around those no the noses just to reinforce that as well so you can see those really well. Colorless Blender, I've put so much ink on her little face that it's bleeding out a little bit. B95. Notice I'm going right up and over those lines, so hopefully those lines are disappearing. B97 for shading. B95 again to blend. And B97. Her shirt's going to start with a B91, so similar, but it's going to be a lighter kind of chambray color. B95 for some the initial shading, kind of that mid-tone, and then B91 to soften getting that second sleeve carefully, getting up into that hairline. I'm also deciding to do her headband as well. So again, notice I'm going right over those lines. So those kind of faded brown lines are disappearing. B95 for shading. And I decide they need a little bit of B97 to really reinforce some of those darker shaded areas. Hopefully at this point you can see that my light source is coming down right in the center. B97, B95, and B91 on that shirt and headband on the girl. I'm testing out some colors for hair and his hat, trying a bunch of different things on the corner just to see how I like them. Um, I do a lot of that when I'm experimenting and haven't done a test run first. So I've got that going. And then I use a sepia multiliner, a 0.5 specifically on their little faces to show just their eyes and mouth because I am going to lose those if I don't. And I'm not super pleased with that, but that's what I've got. Y21 and Y26 are coming in on his hat. Y28 for those deepest shadows. I don't use that very much. Y21 to soften those up a little bit. And then I am going to go back on her skin. I go back several times because I'm not totally content with her face, but I'm getting closer. E81 is going to be the little boy's shirt. And I go back in with E84 into the wrinkles and the shaded areas. And E87 into the very darkest creases of the shirt. Soften up with E84 and E81. I get that back sleeve because that's kind of hidden in there. But I use the same three colors. E81, E84, and E87. And I noticed his neck wasn't colored. So E11. I added some freckles on her. 
I'm doing her skirt in that same E8 series that I did his um, shirt in. Her tights are an E4-3 and E4-4, a little bit of E4-7. And I work in reverse on her second leg so I don't lose that area between the two legs. I'm jumping back and forth with those three E4s. E4-3 is for the base of the plant or that little tree. Some dots and squiggles with E4-4 kind of create that look of dirt. And E4-7, again, much lighter, more toward the base. And then I use the E02 to kind of reinforce her little fingers and hands because we lost those a little bit in the dirt. E00 on her face, again, I soften the freckles. They just didn't turn out the way I was hoping. E21 is the base of her hair. E23 is the base of his hair. And I'm going to lose my titles here in a second. I'm having trouble with my technology. E23 is starting with the flicks on her hair. And then E25 on his and hers. Look, at it's coming from the top down and the bottom up. On both heads of hair, these are narrow flicks with the very tip of my brush marker. Sorry, and then E27 is my last one here, and E29 just a little bit on his. I soften that up just a little with E23 and E21 on their two heads. I added a little more E25 on hers. I felt like it didn't get quite dark enough, and E23. You can see how that closes in that highlight. I've got E21 again, this time on his boots, with an E23 for some shading. E25, I want to make him look kind of like work boots. And E23, soften that up and blend those together. E21 again. And I'm going to do her boots about the same. So E21, E23 is next, and a little bit of E25. <laughs> Softening those, going backwards to get those blended together. E87 on her skirt just to get a little darker edge. I felt like I lost the edge of that skirt. Y21 for edges of lace on both her shirt and kind of trim. I realized she had another piece of hair, so I'm going back in with that same E2 series on both the trunk of the tree and her hair because that second piece back by her second arm didn't get colored. G40 is going to base all the leaves on the tree. I'm trying to avoid the hearts because I am going to color those red and green and red being complementary colors. Those are not going to layer very well together. G43 is kind of flicking in just small squiggles. You can see better now with the G46 how I'm squiggling less of this mount, this color fades at the top. And then my hearts are going to base in R32. Going next with R35 to kind of add some shading. And R37 is going to go even deeper so it really highlights those hearts. Clean her skin one last time. And now I've got some ground and I've got YG61 that I'm starting with. And this is where I'm going to start. I need to place that horizon line in there, kind of figure out where the top of that edge is going to happen. And this part, I don't necessarily need it even. I'm trying to get just a nice base coat, but it doesn't have to be solid because I don't necessarily need that ground to be nice and smooth. YG63 is coming in next. I'm going to focus this in close to the figures. So it's not totally a shadow underneath them. It's just going to get darker next to the figures and kind of fade out from there. Sorry, slid a little bit low. And then I am coming in with one more. It's a YG67. And again, I'm keeping this even closer in and then I'm fading them together. So I'm going back with my YG63 and then now I'm back with my YG61. And fading those three colors or blending, sorry, those three colors together. And sorry this is all happening so fast. This video ended up being over an hour long. Um, B quadruple zero, so B with four zeros is what I'm starting with on the sky. I'm not doing a full block. I'm kind of keeping it in that kind of soft oval or circular shape, and then I'm fading this with colorless blender. 
So one image all complete. Um, the colorless blender is still drying a little bit, so you might see that watermark up there. I'm not completely content with the faces, so I might still fiddle with those a little bit more. Um, the no line coloring is tough, and so it's something that you go back and forth on. I did add the multi liner in on their faces for their eyes and mouth, and I think that was probably a mistake. So I'd have to, but that's something I can't erase. Um, I would have to actually recolor this image from scratch that those lines are there permanently at this point so um, other than that I'm pretty pleased with how the rest of it turned out and I still think it's absolutely usable on a card face so thank you for joining me and checking out the no line coloring for a little bit of Valentine's Day hope you have a happy colorful week